Hi everyone, it's Jen from Sunday Baubles. I hope you're all doing well. Today's short video is on brooch identification. We'll be taking a look at the fasteners and using that information to be able to date when brooches were made. We'll take a look at a few examples from my collection and by the end of this video you will have learned a few tips and tricks so that you can date your own brooches with confidence. Let's begin by looking at the anatomy of a fastener. There are three components to a fastener that can help us date a brooch. The hinge, which secures the pin to the brooch, the pin, which pierces the fabric that the brooch will be worn on, and the catch, which is used to secure the pin in a closed position. These three components can help us date the fabrication of a piece. There are three important periods to keep in mind when thinking about the catch timeline when dating brooches. The sea catch has been used for centuries and was used up until about 1910 when safety catches were introduced. A sea catch can be recognized by its sea shape and it is often handmade. Trombone safety catches, lever safety catches, and other handmade safety catches began being introduced around 1890. These have many different mechanisms to them and sometimes are quite complex. But the key here is that there is a safety mechanism to ensure that the brooch fastener stays closed, and these were handmade. From 1920 onward, the modern safety catch came into play, and these were machine-made safety catches that were designed to keep your brooch closed. They are prefabricated and have a round shape. When dating a brooch's hinge, there are really two periods to keep in mind. Tube hinges were used for many centuries, up until about 1910, and a tube hinge can be detected by its tubular shape and is usually made of two pieces soldered together. Round hinges were introduced around 1920 and have been used onward. These are usually a single piece that have the pin inserted, and they can be detected by their round shape. Learning these basic traits will help you date your brooches with ease, so let's take a look at some examples from my collection. Play along and test your skills, and we'll start with some pietra dura. This brooch is made of inlaid hardstone known as pietra dura, and it is set in an 800 silver frame. It closes with a tube hinge, which is also used to secure the bale, and it has an early safety clasp. I date this to around 1890 because the time coincides with the time frame when the tube hinge was still in use and safety catches were handmade. Inlaid stone pieces were also very popular souvenirs during Victorian grand tours. They were often brought home and then set and worn. So that does help provide some indication when we're doing period dating. Next up, we're going to take a look at some filigree. This is a brooch made of silver filigree. It looks delicate, but it's quite robust. The closure is a trombone clasp with an early round hinge. I date this brooch to circa 1910. Trombone clasps were often found in French brooches, including Czech brooches that were finished in France. Our next material is notoriously camera shy, and that is opal, so let's get in really close. This brooch has many Victorian details, such as the trefoil and ball beads, but once we flip it over, we can see a lever safety clasp and round hinge. This tells us that the brooch is from the Art Deco Victorian Revival Movement, circa 1920. Glass has a special place in my heart, and there are plenty of wonderful glass brooches out there. Next, we will take a look at this special example. This stamped metal brooch is Czechoslovakian. We know this because of the soldered pieces. It holds a rare blue-green dragon's breath glass cabochon. The fastener is a sea catch and a round hinge, and can be dated to the first quarter of the 20th century around 1920. Now, dragon's breath glass is typically found in this peachy, almost pink, with a blue flash or purple flash. And I have looked for years to find other examples like that blue-green and have not come up with any. I'm curious if any of you collectors have. Please drop me a line in the comments. And in the meantime, we'll take a look at our next brooch, which is a natural stone example. This French bouquet holds jade leaves amethyst and rock crystal flowers studded with diamonds. Flip this beauty over and you will see a handmade sea catch that follows the modern design and a rounded hinge. I date this to just after World War II, around 1945. 
The French take marking their medals quite seriously, and so the maker's marks and purity marks can also help us date a brooch. That last brooch had maker's marks on it. They were tiny, but I found them. So always keep your eye out for those clues to help you date things as well. Next up, we are going to take a look at this fantastic spray bouquet. Diamond spray brooches were very popular in the 1950s. This one holds multicolor sapphires as well as rubies and diamonds. As expected for the period, the fastener is a modern safety catch and a machine-made rounded hinge. I date this brooch to circa 1950. You may have noticed that we progress through the brooches from the earliest to the latest, and here is a quick cheat sheet so that you can see how you did. I've put together a fastener timeline to help you date brooches, and I hope the tips today are going to help you with dating the pieces in your collection and those that you're looking at in the wild. Feel free to screenshot the next slide. One final note in dating jewelry for today. There's a lot of crossover in periods and techniques, and it's important to note that when there's an innovation, it doesn't mean that everybody automatically moves towards using it. So pieces that seem early may actually be a little bit later. So you must use all of your skills in order to date a piece. Try and understand what the materials are, who the maker is, and the context of the design stylistically as well. I hope these tips are helpful, and if you enjoy them, please subscribe to the channel for more videos. I'll see you again soon.